NAT type errors are super common across just about every gaming platform, whether you're on PlayStation, Xbox, Switch, or desktop. But look who I'm talking to, you obviously know that already, because that's why you're watching this video in the first place. No more time wasting, let's get straight into a surprisingly quick step-by-step -step guide on how to change your NAT type, followed by a little more information on what it actually is and why it matters if you do want to stick around. I'm Callum, and you're watching Top 10 VPN. Let's get started. The good news is that changing your NAT type is primarily done at router level. This means that if you have more than one device that you game on at home, then this solution should fix it for all of them at once. Bad news is that, of course, means that you need access to your router. If you're using a network that isn't your own, then you might not be able to follow these steps. But don't worry though, I'll go over a different solution just for you once we're done with this one. Feel free to use the timestamps in the video description to skip ahead. What we want to do is change your NAT type to open. The first two things you'll need to know are the login details for your router and your IP address. If you don't know your login details, then you can find the defaults for a massive range of manufacturers and models at routerpasswords.com. It's an amazing website and I want to shake the hand of and also maybe give a little kiss to whoever created it as it saved my bacon so many times before, including literally as I was putting together the footage you're going to see for this video when I couldn't remember the, my own login, uh, genuinely. Now that you have those, here's what you do. Step one, on a computer connected to your network that you're using, open up your web browser of choice, type your IP address into the address bar and hit enter. You'll now be asked for the login details you either looked up earlier or already know. Enter them. Step two, now you're into your router settings. You need to find the settings for UPnP, the common abbreviation for something called universal plug and play. In my experience, router manufacturers and ISPs don't make this easy. You'll just have to dig around for it. Try looking under submenus called something like settings, network settings, or advanced settings. Step three, once you've found the option for UPnP, set it to enabled. This will essentially work as a sort of dynamic, automatic port forwarding and your NAT type will now be open or moderate instead of strict. You're done. It's genuinely that simple. Your router may now perform some sort of reset or take a moment to update the settings and you should reboot whatever device it is that you're looking to game on. Once that's completed, you can commence gaming online. Enjoy and try not to get too tilted. If that method didn't work for you, you can also try manual port forwarding. You do still need access to your router to attempt this though. The way it works for each gaming platform varies and the instructions, while not complicated, are a little long-winded and they involve a bunch of numbers. So what I'm going to do is rather than reading it all aloud to you right now, which I think would be quite confusing, I'm instead going to link to the written steps for this method in the description. Check it out if you need to. Now, for the method I mentioned earlier when you don't have access to or rights to meddle with the router. It involves using a VPN to create a mobile hotspot. Fair warning though, this method does require two things, a Windows 10 or 11 computer and a VPN subscription. You need both. The way this works is that Windows allows you to create a virtual network in the form of a hotspot. And using a VPN essentially makes this hotspot its own virtual router, which can then be used as a gateway through which you can bypass your own router's strict NAT type entirely. In our testing experience, it'll give you a moderate NAT type instead. So just to clarify, this isn't actually changing your own router's NAT type. It's just creating a way around it with a simulated router of sorts, meaning that you'll need to connect to this hotspot whenever you want to game online with a moderate NAT type. Here's what you need to do. Download and install a VPN on your Windows computer, but don't connect to a server yet. Go to Settings, Network, Mobile Hotspot in Windows. Enable Mobile Hotspot and choose to share over Wi-Fi. Go back to Network and Internet and select Change Adapter Options if you're on Windows 10, or on Windows 11, go to Advanced Network Settings. Then on Windows 10, find the connection named after your VPN, right-click on it and select Properties. If you're on Windows 11, find it, click the drop-down arrow to expand it, and then click Edit. Go to the Sharing tab and select Allow Other Network Users to Connect Through This Computer's Internet Connection. Click on the drop-down menu labeled Home Networking Connection and pick the hotspot that you created earlier. Now, go and open up your VPN and connect to a server. My advice would be to pick one as near to you as possible because that will keep latency and lag nice and low. Now, hop onto your games console and connect it to the Wi-Fi hotspot that you just created. You can do all of this with just about any VPN, but we have put together a list of the best VPNs for gaming if you're still undecided. Link in the description. Now, we're all set up. You might be wondering just why all of this matters. It can be a real pain and it's also quite cryptic for the average gamer. How are you supposed to know how to deal with a NAT type error when you're just trying to get into a COD lobby? Here's the deal. NAT stands for Network Address Translation. Your device will have a private IP address that your router assigns it so that it can identify it versus all the other devices connected to it. And NAT takes that network address and translates it into a public IP address so that the rest of the internet can identify it. NAT has three different types. 
open, moderate, and strict. And this type is dictated by your router's NAT firewall and then interpreted by the console or computer that you're playing on. That's why you can end up with different NAT types on different devices, despite them all being connected to the same router. An open NAT type comes with absolutely zero restrictions. The port which your device is using to connect to the internet is open, meaning the connection is direct with little interference from your router to slow things down. It allows you to chat and host games, and anyone can make a direct connection to you. Moderate NAT means that sufficient ports have been opened. You'll still be able to game online, probably, but you can only connect to other players on a moderate or open NAT type. Oh, and it's also called NAT Type 2 on Sony consoles for some reason. Strict NAT is when a device is sat firmly and safely behind a router firewall. No incoming connection will be allowed to be made directly to the device in question. You can only connect to gamers with open NAT types, you can't host matches, everything will take longer, and you can't join matchmaking if the game you're playing relies on a direct peer-to-peer -peer system. There's plenty of them, including uh, Super Smash Bros. Ultimate and GTA Online, or perhaps whatever game it was that led you to watching this video. That's all you need to know, other than my usual qualifier of please do be careful when playing around with settings like this and don't do anything that I wouldn't do. Screwing up your router's port settings can potentially expose you to all sorts of hackers and viruses and general web nastiness, so please make sure you follow the instructions closely. Boring disclaimer out of the way, please like if this video did what you needed it to do, subscribe for more help if you feel like it, and go get yourself back to gaming free of frustrating that type errors. I'll catch you later.